I told them you need to come and take a look at this place. Now at 10, group home health hazards. Residents pulled out for what police are calling deplorable conditions. Why a criminal investigation is now underway. Plus, just keep them locked up. Stolen guns in Salt Lake City. Nearly 300 taken just last year. What you can do to better protect your pistol from falling into the wrong hands. And it's hard for them because Hunter High School um, is a very close knit family. Murder charges filed against a 14 year old accused of killing two of his classmates. Newly released records revealing what the teen suspect told police after pulling the trigger. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 10 starts now. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night. Tonight, a memorial remains outside Hunter High School. The community still reeling from the amount of loss being felt. Two teens dead, a third remains in the hospital. And tonight, the 14-year-old suspected gunman now charged with the most serious crime under Utah law, double murder. Two of the seven charges the teen is facing for allegedly shooting and killing two classmates near Hunter High two weeks ago. Now tonight, new insight from court documents revealing what led up to that shooting, claiming that the teens had been involved in a dispute for more than a year. Documents say on January 13th, a fight broke out. Someone broke it up as the teens were allegedly walking away. The other group, quote, caught up to them and jumped them. A second fight started and the boy says, quote, he began shooting into the crowd before running away. Now at this point, it will be up to the district attorney to decide if the teens case will stay in juvenile court or if he will be tried as an adult. Notwithstanding that it's the most serious crime under Utah law, uh, the, the prosecutors will meet with the victim's family. They'll meet with a, a counselor who will do a, an evaluation on the offender and try to decide where the best placement is for him. Now look, local attorney Greg Scordis, who's not attached to this case, saying that the teen's attorney will likely push for juvenile court where the focus seems to be more on rehabilitation. But due to the serious nature, being tried as an adult is on the table. Of course, if decided he'll be tried in his adult, he could face life in prison. Now the teen is scheduled in court again March 3rd. Well, with the heart-wrenching reality of it all, many in the West Valley community calling for change and an end to gun violence. Lulu Latu Wolfgram, a youth coordinator for the nonprofit group Pacific Island Knowledge to Action Resources, and also a parent of a Hunter High student herself, says her organization is spreading a message of unity and nonviolent conflict resolution, planning a group presentation at the high school. One of our goals is to educate, better educate our our youth better educate our parents, um, you know, that violence isn't the answer. Granite School District officials saying that their goal right now is to reassure students that school is still a safe place. The district encouraging all students to take advantage of the counseling resources available. 294, that's how many guns Salt Lake City Police say were reported stolen back in 2021. In the last three years, they say it's increased by nearly 25%. ABC 4's Courtney Johns live to explain what can be done to address this. Courtney. Yeah, Glenn, Salt Lake City Police say we saw roughly one gun theft every day last year. And so far this year, they've reported at least 19 gun thefts in Salt Lake City. We've had homicides that have occurred uh, that have been the result of guns that have been stolen. District Attorney Sim Gill says people who steal guns often end up committing other serious crimes. The collateral consequences of this violence uh, not only uh, impacts that person who's targeted, but it targets their family, it uh, targets their loved ones and victimizes them and then ultimately victimizes us as a community as well. When a firearm is stolen, it could easily end up in the hands of someone willing to use your gun to commit a violent crime such as a robbery or even worse, hurting or killing someone. Today, Salt Lake City Police tweeting about an uptick in firearm thefts, a nearly 25% increase over the last three years. While Detective Michelle Mickleen says she can't say with certainty why we're seeing an increase, Gill says an increase in gun sales could be a part of it. According to the Utah Department of Public Safety, more than 180,000 background checks for firearms were conducted in 2020. That's nearly double the amount from a year before. We have a large volume uh, a proliferation of these firearms there. The state's annual crime report also shows an increase in stolen guns in 2020, valued at over a million dollars. The last time it was that high was in 2016. But Gill says this isn't about gun control. 
It's about gun owners taking the proper precautions, like locking up your gun, a message Salt Lake City police hope more gun owners follow. Just keep them locked up. And locking your car won't cut it. I think a lot of times people think that they're safe if they put them in their car or if they, you know, if they're not locked up. And, and that's just not the case. Salt Lake City police say another thing that you can do is take a photo of your gun as well as a photo of the serial number of the gun so you have all that information. And police say that information can help them recover your gun if it's stolen. Reporting live in Salt Lake City, Courtney Johns, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Courtney. Well, new at 10, search and rescue crews in Farmington working to rescue a stranded hiker. This all happening at Bountiful Peak in Farmington Canyon. The Davis County Sheriff's Office saying that the 32-year-old hiker called into dispatch on his own and says he does not have any injuries. Switching to the weather now, here's a look at the clear skies in Spanish Fork from earlier today. We are officially halfway through the work week. And it certainly was a cold start to this day as well. It definitely was. And you saw those clear skies in the central and southern portion of the state, but it was a little different in the north. Check out that sunset photo. Absolutely stunning. West Jordan here, Marlene Crutcher catching this one, but the cloud cover moving in associated with a weak, dry cold front bringing a reinforcing shot of cold air. You see it on the satellite radar. There it goes. That front may making its way through the state. Mostly clear conditions out there for a bulk of Utah, but cold conditions. Made it to 39 today, 22 in Logan. We saw 52 in St. George, 41 over in Moab. Now those temperatures are dropping with those clear skies already down to single digits in Logan. They were zero this morning. 20s along the Wasatch Front, 35 in St. George. That front brought in some mixing, but tonight we've got several counties in the moderate air quality group. That does include Cache Valley and Box Elder, as well as Duchesne and Weber County. I'll tell you what to expect when it comes to air quality and when we can warm up a bit in my full forecast. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, thank you, Alana. Well, the Salt Lake City Health Department and law enforcement agencies shut down a group home in Midvale today. This according to some concerns of what the Sheriff's Department calls deplorable living conditions. ABC 4's Lena Takata joining us live from outside of the facility, this near 1st East and 78th South. And Lena, what do we know so far tonight? Emily, 17 residents were evacuated out of Evergreen Place, a congregate living facility in Midvale, because of sewage issues. But law enforcement officials say the facility was under investigation for quite some time. Jean Montoya lives across the street from Evergreen Place, a living facility housing people with various health issues, including mental health. Montoya says he, along with some neighbors, have been filing complaints about the facility for some time. I told them, you need to come and take a look at this place. Something's not right. On Wednesday, residents of Evergreen Place were evacuated from the facility after a sewage backup made living conditions unsuitable, according to the Salt Lake County Health Department. We knew there was a sewage leak. Uh, our inspector came, addressed what we thought was a plugged line. They fixed that. They they uh, clean the carpets and did what they needed to, and then it happened again immediately. Hence the fact we are now aware the sewage system doesn't work. The fire department was also on scene to assess fire safety related issues. I know they had some pretty compelling deficiencies relative to um, fire uh, um, extinguishers and uh, egress and some of those type of things. After seeing possible signs of neglect, law enforcement confirmed a criminal investigation into the facility in partnership with the Metro Mental Health Unit. My emotions when I seen it happening, finally, finally, somebody has come to take a look at this. At last report, living arrangements have been made for most of the evacuated residents. Live in Midvale, Lena Takata, ABC4 News. Thank you, Lena. Turning now to our coronavirus coverage. COVID hospitalizations here in Utah hitting a record high. State data showing 776 people are currently being treated in the hospital for the virus. That's the most at one time since the pandemic started. The State Department of Health reporting 18 new deaths and more than 7,400 cases today. And our latest number is causing a strain on Utah teachers. One school district tonight even considering shortening school days to keep up with staffing shortages. The Alpine School Board voting last night to cut school days by an hour, but now they're reversing that decision. The board says it wants to look at the logistics again and get more feedback. ABC4 spoke with parents who say they know this choice is hard. 
they knew there was really no good option um, at the moment to help students and to help teachers. And, um, you know, there was a lot of concern shared and I don't know what the right answer is. The school board saying that they want to make sure that either decision does not further teacher burden. In national news tonight, the Federal Reserve signaling it will start raising interest rates in March for the first time in three years. This does all come as inflation is causing the price of everything from groceries to gas to skyrocket. Higher interest rates means everything from home mortgages to car loans and even credit card bills will get more expensive for consumers and businesses. The good news is if you go back and look at the all of the rate hike cycles that we've had going all the way back to 1950, the market has tended to do well after it starts. Many economists say it's unlikely interest rates will reach double digits like we've seen in previous decades. In northern Utah tonight, Utah State University students are seeing their satellite orbit in space. All right, those beeps are the Scotsman tune, and for anyone who is an Aggie, you know that is the Utah State University fight song. What's so cool about this, though, is that it was recorded in Argentina this morning after being picked up from a satellite designed and built entirely by undergraduate students. I was nervous up until as soon as we heard that first faint beacon just barely over the noise, we knew it was working. You know, instantly we knew that that meant that it had turned on and it was functioning properly. Wow, okay, the team is waiting to get a picture back from the satellite and radio stations across the planet can pick up the signal with the fight song. A huge congrats to those Aggies. Coming up, growing tensions between the U.S. and Russia. How American leaders are responding to Russian demands tonight and... You know, I'm not who you're expecting. <laughs> right, a delivery from an unexpected guest by one cop in South Dakota delivered this DoorDash meal. And this is what it looked like at 538 from Magna. How pretty was that sunset? The cloud cover moving in associated with a weak front. We're going to talk about the impacts and what to expect for tomorrow in Utah's most accurate forecast. You're watching ABC4 News with Emily Flores, Glenn Mills, and Alana Brophy. 
And welcome back. Take a look at this incredible video out of Houston, Texas tonight. A good Samaritan helps deputies take down a runaway suspect. Now, the 26 year old is a former high school track star and a trained security guard. He says he was in the right place at the right time. I saw him, the suspect running all the way down and he was already like 50 yards from the uh, officer. So I turned around and uh, sped up and blocked him in and I got out the car and started running. All right, well, deputies say the man stole a truck and drove in and out of neighborhoods. When he took off on foot, that's when Devin, the man we just heard from, stepped in to help. Devin says hopefully this man will learn from his mistake. A woman in South Dakota expecting to see her DoorDash driver when she got a knock on the door, but instead this happened. Hi. Your driver got arrested. Yeah, the police officer noticed that there was food in the car of the person he arrested. So instead of just leaving it there, he decided to make the delivery himself. The doorbell video has now gone viral. The officer's sister saying he's not the type of person you'd expect to become famous online. I'm sure he's not really liking all the publicity right now, but I mean, cops like him deserve to be recognized because it's the small things that matter. You can say that again. The police department says this is an example of why they have such a good relationship with their community. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy, weather rate certified 10 years in a row. You can't help but love that officer just finishing the delivery. I'm kind of interested in why the driver was arrested. Yeah, me too. too. Oh, I don't worry about that. I'm like Arby's from the authorities. Yes, I will take that any day. What a nice officer to come through in the clutch. Okay, this is what we saw tonight. Isn't this stunning? Wendy Bowman caught this in Immigration Canyon. Sunset was just on fire tonight. Looked really good out there. Here's South Jordan from Chris. Williams, we always love your photos, weather at abc4.com. We had a weak front bring in that cloud cover, also bringing a reinforcing shot of cold air. It's chilly out there if you're just stepping out. Some improved air, we've seen that for the last couple of days, but that will change. I've got the timeline on when chilly overnights expected tonight, and I'll tell you for how much longer the pattern change, hopefully right around the corner. I'll show you where we're hoping. There are the clouds up there in Cache Valley. Kurt Benjamin catching this one looks wintry, so pretty up there. Logan's cold though, they're already in the single digit sitting at nine degrees. The front comes on through clear skies for a bulk of the state, but you can see that cloud cover and it's moving towards eastern Utah and mostly dry front. We didn't see much in the way of moisture right now. Air quality hitting the moderate category for cash. Weber and Box Elder and Duchesne counties. We've got clean air for the rest of the Wasatch front, but as we head into tomorrow, there is a possibility that the elevated particulate matter sticks around stubborn in Utah County, Salt Lake and up there in Logan. You can see eastern Utah. We get clear conditions with clean air. Also the case in Tooele County, Davis County. Like to see that this week has not been as bad as it was last week. We've been dealing with some movement, which has been helpful. 27 in Salt Lake right now. Those 20s continuing to dip with partly cloudy skies in the north. We're going to bottom out in the teens in Salt Lake. So tomorrow, very cold start to the day along the Wasatch Front. So freezing temperatures, just expect them. That cold air actually will bring us down for our daytime highs by a degree or two. So we'll be slightly cooler than the seasonal norms, but we will see mostly sunny skies for our Thursday. Heading into Friday, inversion sets up and means business. We get seasonal temperatures, but the haze will be noticeable. Really digs in its heels as we close out the work week and head towards the weekend. So if you have outdoor plans, just a heads up, you will see air quality decline in parts. Okay, the pattern change. Here's yesterday's system. Our quick front comes through. Ridge of high pressure sets up. Low sneaks below it towards the end of the weekend. And then that low is where we should see that pattern change. It's as we start February and we have the chance of some wet weather with significantly cooler temperatures. 20s and 30s for tomorrow. 40s in Moab. 30s along the I-15 corridor. Upper 40s in the Four Corners area. Low 50s in St. George. We will see breezy conditions for the next several days, but plenty of sunshine. More cloud cover by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That's as the storm system will impact the north. Hayes makes a return for the weekend. Monday night, we see the chance of snow that could linger into Tuesday. Temperatures drop back into the 30s for daytime highs. I'm ready for a little snow. I hope you are too. We'll see how it shakes out. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, thanks so much, Alana. Now to international news and the growing tensions between the U.S. and Russia. Tonight, the U.S. ambassador to Moscow delivering America's official response to Russia's security demands. The Kremlin insisting it needed written responses to its demands that Ukraine will never join NATO. Tonight, the Biden administration saying there will be no such guarantees. We make clear that there are core principles that we are committed to uphold and defend, including Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, 
and the right of states to choose their own security arrangements and alliances. The Kremlin denies it plans to attack, but each day it releases more video of troops engaging in what it calls military drills. Ukrainian Prime uh, Foreign Minister telling ABC News he does not think an invasion is imminent, but admits the country is under pressure. Well, with the retirement of Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, one name keeps rising to the top of the list of potential replacements. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, a Harvard Law graduate who served as a clerk to Breyer from 1999 to 2000. Biden saying he would appoint the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court because the court should, quote, look like the country. No black woman has ever been nominated to the high court. Back here at home, Utah's governor tonight honoring some Utah gymnasts on Capitol Hill. Michaela Skinner, Grace McC uh, McCallum, and Kara Eaker all winning medals for Team USA at the Tokyo Olympics, while Amelie Morgan won a bronze for Great Britain. The governor giving each of them certificates of recognition as well as a commemorative coin. Something they very much deserve. Well deserved. Yeah, they can go with their medal now. You got yeah, the commemorative course. coin and the Olympic medal. So. Yep. Congrats to them. Big night in local hoops. Utah and Utah State both try to end long losing streaks. Plus, can the Jazz take down the top team in the NBA? Show you how they're doing against the Rising Suns next in sports. Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. It's difficult to truly gauge the Utah Jazz right now without a full team. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert both out for the rematch against the Phoenix Suns tonight at Vivint Arena. And the Suns, they looked like they were going to run away and hide. Devin Booker outscored the entire Jazz team in the first quarter by himself. 
He had 21 points in the quarter. The Jazz had 19 as Phoenix took a 21 point lead. It was 39 to 18 at the end of the first quarter, but that second quarter was all Jazz. Eric Paschal trying to spark the team, takes it strong and throwing it down. Mike Conley heating up, hits a long three. It's now a 10 point game. Jordan Clarkson doing damage. He had 10 in the first half. This three cuts the deficit to five. And then when Joe Ingles rips a three of his own, it's a two point game at the half. The Jazz outscored Phoenix 30 to 11 in the quarter. Second half, the Jazz keep coming. Conley, nine assists and counting. Feeds Hassan Whiteside for the throwdown, but Devin Booker cannot be stopped. He had 33 on Monday, 37 so far tonight. The Jazz trying to stay within striking distance with the three ball. Royce O'Neal drains one from the corner to make it a five point game, but Chris Paul keeping the Suns on top, backing Conley down, banking it in right now. Few minutes left in the game, the Jazz trail 92 to 84. The run and huge trying to avoid its first nine game losing streak in program history. On the road tonight against Washington State in Pullman, Brandon Carlson back after a five game absence. The Utes find Dushan Mahorchich down low for the one hand jam. Utah up four. Pac 12 Freshman of the Week, Lazar Stefanovic lighting up the three ball. He led him with 11. Now, Carlson had an appendectomy a few weeks ago, trying to be a pain in the side of the Cougars tonight. But Washington State takes an eight-point lead into the half as TJ Bamba gets the hoop and the foul. Second half, Utes trying to hang in there on the road. Booth Gotch, three from the top of the key. But Washington State closes or goes on a 14 to nothing run to blow it open, led by the smallest guy on the court, Tyrell Roberts, torching the Utes in the second half as the Cougars build a 24-point lead and cruise 71-54. Nine straight losses for the first time ever for Utah. And Utah State trying to end a four-game skid at home against San Diego State. Brandon Horvath getting the party started with the three at the Spectrum. The Aggies haven't won at home since December 21st. Trevin Dorius trying to change that with the Dorius dunk. Steven Ashworth on fire in the first half at four three balls. Utah stayed up one at the break, 32-31. Second half, Justin Bean doing what Justin Bean does best. Rebound the ball, the follow bucket right here. And then it's RJ Idlerock from distance as Utah State builds a 16 point lead in the second half. Ashworth continuing to bomb away from three point land. And right now in the second half, Utah State is holding on. They're up 60 to 51. So the Aggies hoping to win their first home game in 2022, I couldn't believe that. Mm -hmm. BYU's on the road tomorrow at Santa Clara. So lots of good hoops going on right now. Yeah, turning into a brutal year for the running Utes. So. Oh, this Ouch. is bad, yeah. I mean, we knew there'd be growing pains. Sure. I didn't think they'd right. see a nine game losing streak yeah. though. Things right. can turn around, they gentlemen. They can, All they right. can, stay positive. Thanks so much, Dana. Coming up, the best ski lodge in the country, right here in Utah. See which hotel is taking the top spot in a new Forbes report. And some say ice is nice. This is what it looked like at Bear Lake. Carol Dyer sending that in. Temperatures 18 degrees up there today. And thanks to John Gurr for sending us this beautiful sunset photo of Salt Lake City.
Find the A10 One Ski Lodge here in Utah being hailed as the best ski hotel in the country. Stein Erickson Ski Lodge is in Park City beat out 15 other finalists in the Forbes contest. This is the seventh year in a row that it's won the title. Deer Valley also making top 10 in that Forbes list for North America. Utah, it's where it's at. Definitely one of my faves. I mean, yeah. greatest snow on earth. And usually I'm like DG for Dana Green, but now I'm like DV for Deer Valley, right? <laughs> Stein Erickson's super nice, too. You can't go wrong. Okay, guys, into tomorrow, chilly start to the day. Teens for the overnight in Salt Lake, single digits already in Cache Valley. 36 for the high, thanks to that passing front. 53 in St. George. We get dry conditions and mostly sunny skies. But looks can be deceiving, especially in the north, because we are going to see a chilly day with haze building back. DV. I'll take go. DV over DG oh, any day oh. of the week. <laughs> Glenn said it, and he didn't stutter, Dana. I'm not getting involved. Come on, you know you would too. <laughs> Such a kidster. All right, thanks so much, Alana. Appreciate it, and thank you for joining us tonight. We're always glad to have you with us. Remember, you can interact with us on social media. Let us know what you think of the stories we are working on. Just log on and search ABC4 Utah. Yeah, Facebook and Twitter. And always we're online at abc4.com for the latest headlines. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.